Innovator Robert Horn has spent several decades developing a series of machines that redefine the concept of a motorcycle. They combine alternative suspension with implementing control of both wheels in an absolutely roofless format of a lying chassis. Robert named his creation Rohorn, and it's definitely the most fascinating invention in the world of two-wheeled vehicles in the last 20 years. Robert thinks the vast majority of representatives in the motorcycle industry are terribly boring and devoid of enthusiasm. Check out any of the websites dedicated to motorcycle art and tire yourself to death with endless images of dystopian cafe racers. He genuinely doesn't understand why it's exciting, appealing, or remotely interesting for many people. According to Horn, if modern engineers were to design motorcycles for the first time, they would look completely different, with much better aerodynamics, comfort, and chassis than motorcycles based on 19th century configurations. The only hint of such possibilities were Nessie by Midden Tompkinson and Quasar Newell, although at the time they turned out to be terribly ugly, heavy, and flawed. And Robert also believed that no reconfiguration of components would alter the fact that motorcycles operating at the maximum of their capabilities transform into unicycles. The sole method to substantially enhance productivity is to consistently utilize both tires, that is, augment the wheelbase and manage both wheels. It refers to a subclass of motorcycles called fits forwards, where the driver's legs are positioned forward. Seemed like contradictory contraptions that old folks with a personality disorder usually rode on, no matter how harsh it may sound. But one day in a bike shop, his attention was drawn to a bicycle with a long wheelbase and an aerodynamic yet comfortable seating position that solved many problems. The perfect setup. Soon Robert built a test version of a similar bicycle with an electric motor. The most interesting and unusual thing about it was the steering control. It was done in the form of a fighter jet's control stick. And here it is worth explaining this decision by Robert's love for airplanes. Building an airplane at home is an impossible task, at least from a financial point of view. The money question for motorcycles is much more forgiving, and aviation has a lot in common with two-wheeled vehicles for a long time. Everyone knows the story of US bikers, who, among other things, emerged because it seems that only a motorcycle could give ex-pilots a similar feeling to flying. So Robert got into two-wheelers full-time, where his ideas once again strongly resonated with his love for winged creatures. In the new horn project, tilting the steering wheel left made the front wheel turn right, causing the motorcycle to lean left. This is simply fundamental control in action. However, Robert had to do a considerable amount of relearning before he could relax while driving. The steering wheel was almost always in one direction wheel control mode. The only time he switched to the opposite mode was in situations of a sharp turn or U-turn at a very low speed. And the biggest surprise was the simple movement along a fixed course with different gear ratios of the rear steering control. The more both ends turn in the same direction, the smaller the angle of inclination, what none of the steering control theorists ever predicted. Although the two-axis joystick was priceless for testing, it was actually not a viable motorcycle control system. Ever since, the project has served as a lovely centerpiece in the Horn's living room. Later on, there still wasn't a budget to build a full-size electric racing bike. But by then, the failed obsession with GoPed had reached its peak. For their 23 cubic engines, various cheap odds and ends were available, and there was a local racing series held in the big hotel parking lots around Denver and other locations. That is the reason why they constructed and tested an extremely low, lying racing GoPed called 2WS. The steering gear ratio of 2 to 1 significantly reduced the angles of inclination, making the ride stiff and slippery. Horn believed he could make and sell ram kits without major issues. A humble start in sports, but a great way to introduce the world to 2WS concept and the opportunity to grow into something bigger. The Cycle World magazine even showed interest in both the racing 2WS GoPad and the electric experimental motorcycle 2WS. But it turned out that the articles were written just to be preserved, because soon the widespread fascination with GoPad collapsed, taking with it the racing series and the secondary market. Robert's motorcycle spent the next few years hanging over his desk, what has already grown into some kind of fetish. 
Then it became a depressing reminder of what was not. The budget was zero once again, but low interest credit cards were easy to obtain at that particular time. It would be dumb not to continue, jumping into this wide open window of opportunities. So, a full-fledged motorcycle was developed to be very cheap and easy to assemble. And now, as a power unit, he used an engine from a Kawasaki EX500 donor, again due to its cheapness. It was built in a barn using square and rectangular steel pipes. It didn't need any fancy frame equipment. Absolute geometric precision. All of the welds were performed on an adorable little machine and required no effort at all. The processing was carried out using a small affordable combo machine. It was very slow but accomplished a lot of valuable stuff. The cladding was also kept as simple as possible, trying not to look excessively ugly. The parts that could have been significantly lightened were not lightened, regardless of the lightweight of racing vehicle parts. Extra work hours postponed the answer to the most crucial question. Will he even work at all? But he made it. The local MRA club and the local High Plains Raceway allowed Robert to participate in the races. And although the motorcycle didn't turn out to be competitive, competing in a racing environment provided much more valuable experience than just renting a track and rushing on the next lap. Real races on a real racetrack stimulate thinking that cannot be simulated. Creating a motorcycle is undoubtedly the most interesting part, but if you're not willing to go all out and pit it against the racing world, then you're not really proving anything. John Britton. After the final race, he was supposed to become an additional decoration for the living room, but then Horn got the opportunity to showcase it at an event, which sounded like a good excuse to take it out one last time. The event itself was a blast. Robert received favorable feedback from some writer enthusiasts and encountered numerous fascinating individuals. After 25 years of dreaming about a revolutionary racing electric bike, it's time to wake up and make it a reality. At least that's what Horn was told. While he truly wants to join electric bike races, which he has in mind, his next project will once more have an internal combustion engine for the same reasons. Cost. As long as he's using his available credit and not someone's big bag of cash, gasoline will still be the only solution. This new form needs to be a full-fledged concept, not just a bunch of minor improvements. It's hard to prove the advantages of wings by attaching them to a frog. They really work best on birds. The transition from frog to bird is usually too radical a step for conservative business corporations that have invested too much money in producing the best frogs. So these new concepts come from crazy enthusiasts, many of whom seem to just like change for the sake of change. Due to this, they have the potential to make errors that can make even their most excellent concepts appear absurd. But these ideas just have to wait until traditional thinking completely goes belly up. Then these ideas gain wide popularity and acquire the label of progress.